Welcome to today's Grives Devotional. I'm Pastor Ted from Connect Church. I want to share some thoughts today on the subject of love for enemies, our love for those who are different, our love for those who disagree with us. At the beginning of this new year, I started a new devotional that's a compilation of Dietrich Bonhoeffer's writings. And every morning I'm finding myself being challenged by his insight and depth in the Word of God. And that challenges me to go deeper into the Word of God, or you might say deeper into the meat of the Word instead of the milk of the Word. I want to go deeper, and I want to challenge us this year to go deeper into the Word of God. But the genesis of today's Garage devotional comes out of my devotional reading earlier this week. Let me start by reading a few lines from Bonhoeffer. Don't believe that you know on your own on how to get along with people or how to deal with enemies or what good and evil are, lest humankind devour ourselves completely. That challenges me. I need to think real deeply in that. I want to encourage you to think of that on that phrase this week. These words challenge us, though, to understand that in, in and of ourselves, we cannot know how to deal with or treat or do life with others except through the way of God's love. But many times that way of God's love seems foolish in our eyes. We tend to think it's foolish to love an enemy unconditionally, to embrace them when they're wicked in their wickedness, or to do good towards them. The question that I believe that comes from this type of thinking and how Bonhoeffer describes this love is this, how foolish is the love of God? Loving this way, we might say, is condoning sin, condoning wickedness. Loving this way is condoning bad behavior. Or maybe loving this way is the highest love, the greatest wisdom, and the way of God or the way of Jesus. How has Jesus loved us? Instead of condemning us or shunning us or treating us badly, he loved us. I was struck by this question at the end of the devotional that Dietrich Bonhoeffer puts out, and let me share it with you. Are we of the opinion that God loves us more than God loves our enemies? Are we of the opinion that God loves us more than God loves his enemies? In other words, would we believe that we are God's favorite children? Or in other words, do we believe that we are God's favorite children? It may help us to remember that every one of us has been created in the image of God. And everyone is loved the same by Jesus. Whether they are wicked, mean, hateful, or etc. We are loved the same. We are all children of the same Heavenly Father. When we learn how to get along with people through the Word of God, and unconditional love that comes from Jesus and the equipping of the power of the Holy Spirit, we are loving then like our Heavenly Father. It may help us to love our neighbor and get along with others. That's what helps us. The Holy Spirit and the Word of God helps us to love our neighbors and to get along with others. But it also reminds us that, that we ourselves are not perfected yet. We ourselves are still in need of God's love, still in need of God's Word, still in need of the love of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit to grow and to get along with others but it involves a choice to love others like our Heavenly Father loves us. Lastly, we need to remember while all of us are created in the image of God, some are still prodigals, just like we once were. In the parable of the prodigal son, we clearly see the difference between the father's love for his son and how he treats him and how the brother treats the prodigal brother. I want to end today by reading the parable of the prodigal son and, and make a couple comments. Let's begin reading. And he said, there was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had went and then he had went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of the country who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. 
And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and he came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to the father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing and he called one of his servants and he asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come home and your father has killed the fatted calf and he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he answered his father, look, these many years I've served you and I've never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a young goat. I might sell that I might celebrate with with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him? And he said to his son, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It is fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this year your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. We see in the prodigal father, who is an image of our heavenly father, loved both his sons the same. He loved the prodigal son who spurned his father, spoke negatively against his father, and would not listen to his father, who threw away all of his inheritance and turned away from his father and from God. Then there's the elder son who stayed with his father and worked hard on the land and believed that he was better though. He believed he was better than his brother and deserved more than his brother. Yet the father loved them both equally. Are we giving into the popular idea that we are better than those who are mean and hateful or just because they are not a Christian? Let's remember that all of us have been created in the image of God and that all of us are the children of God whom he loves without conditions, and he calls us to love others the same way. It is the love of God and the grace of God that leads us to repentance and new life, that leads us to unity and community and provides the way to get along with others. I hope you find yourself challenged just like I have, that we remember that we're all children of our Heavenly Father. Some are still just prodigals, but some who are, are born again, we need to learn better how to love unconditionally. Blessings to you.